Welcome back to the 7 o'clock show. We're live with you until 8 and we've got politician Lucinda Creighton with us tonight. But we're also joined by a man who's an international best-selling author, has sold over 25 million books Ooh. that have been translated into 44 languages worldwide. It's author Owen Colfer, everyone. Yay! Best-selling author, eh? Uh, these guys are very rowdy. They are right, yeah. yeah. You don't get this on the morning show, it's all respect. No, yeah, I know, yeah. It's all respect Sleep. and quiet. They, they take it in turns to go to our houses in the morning, yeah. so that when we wake up, we get a round of applause. I just wish we knew who they were. Yeah, I haven't got a clue. We should get to them. We, should, we need to close the doors. I feel I've yeah. opened a can of worms here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> close that again. Well, look, as Martin said, best-selling author, but you actually credit a lot to, to your dad, don't you, and oh, yeah. to your family yeah. road trips as a child. Well, my dad was a historian, and there was four, five kids, and we had a Renault 4. Mm. Maybe you remember mm. the Renault 4? Yeah in that you could climb over the back seat into the trunk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was the prize place. I didn't have the gear stick just under yes. the mirror. It was a weird <laughs> uh, gear stick. And obviously no seatbelts for anybody. Obviously. So whenever you went around... There we water, go. That's there. Oh, it was purple. So my... Oh, you got it there. Yeah. yeah. We had four or five of those. And uh, on the long journeys to the Rock of Cashel, my dad would start telling the story to keep us from killing each other. <laughs> <laughs> about, about Vikings, very violent because he knew what we liked. And yes, keep you So, you know, amused. a guy would have a sword called Brainbiter and he would go around. There was no real story arc, he would just chop people. <laughs> and then my mother would tap in and kind of try and calm it down a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe <laughs> the Vikings the thought we might open a garden centre and it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> and we were mesmerised and uh, I was in the trunk lying down and I was <laughs> drifting off to these worlds. And I realise now that I was drifting off because my head was that far from the exhaust pipe. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. so do you lie by that exhaust pipe to get yes, inspiration, inspiration for yeah. I had one installed stories. in my office. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, when you grow up with stories, it's a sh very short leap, I think, uh, to telling your own stories. And yes. Every writer that I... Or most writers that I know that I've asked about that, they all say, oh, yeah, my <coughs> mom or my dad or my grandma, somebody would read them stories or tell them yeah. stories. Yes. Incredible. So that's where I started. And then, like your parents, you became a teacher. But I didn't did. you have quite a unique teaching style? You were more creative. Well, we did. I, we liked, I liked to do everything through stories and drama. And, and that's another one I picked up from my dad uh, because he was ahead of his time. And I, just, I remember the moment I decided to be a teacher. My dad had an aquarium, and there was a, there was a phase of water pistols, these penny water pistols. We, all, we were all armed to the gills with water pistols. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my dad said, right, all the water pistols on the table. Fill them all and put them all in the middle. He filled six of his own from the aquarium, Aww. and then he held me up as a human shield and said, "Go." He said, "We're having <laughs> one fight. We're having one fight. Then it's over." And as I was there, like Quentin Tarantino getting <coughs> splattered, I thought, "I, I want to be a teacher." And, uh, and and I did from there, and, and I tried to carry forward his child-centered uh, legacy. And, and you loved it, though, didn't you? you I loved did. It. I taught for 15 years. I, I, I had a great time. My wife Jackie and I travel around the world and we taught. Irish teaching couples are highly valued because we can teach anything and we only need one apartment. Uh, right. So that if you're an sense. Irish teaching couple, travel, I highly recommend it. Okay, okay. And we can have more of those water fighting days when Lucinda sorts out the water charges. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully we can afford those now. Anyway. We collaborate. <laughs> Artemis Fell came along. It did. And of course your life, complete, your life completely changed. It but totally changed, yeah, and instantly. I remember I was in the, the primary schoolyard and I was holding apart two kids who wanted to uh, kill each other, you know, four and five, whatever. There was blood and snot everywhere. And, and the principal came out with the phone and he was, he was holding the phone and he was a little bit shaken. He said, uh, your agent said, there's two movie companies bidding on the rights uh, to Artemis Fowl. And okay. I said, okay, see so you kids do whatever you want. <laughs> And no, 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 I didn't do that. But, but, but it was a bit of a risk, because the, 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 the guy's an anti, he's a yeah. bit of an anti-hero. Well, when I wrote it, I didn't think anyone would, would really want to read it, uh, because I had written a book called Benny and Omar, and that featured a pretty normal kid, but he's a bit bold, as we say. And I, I got a bit of stick in the press for that, so I thought no one is going to want to read a book about this bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as it happened, uh, they did, and uh, it just, it just, it was like a meteor, and it took off. Uh, I remember... People often ask me, when was the moment you realised uh, that it was that it w had gone big? And I remember I was going to London, uh, and there was the Guardian newspaper, and in the top banner, these these photos, and like I was in between uh, Jeffrey Clarkson, or Jeremy Clarkson, and David Beckham. All right. Oh, and, and nice. David Good Beckham place. came out really well out of that banner. <laughs> if he wasn't, <laughs> like, if he 
if he wasn't already good looking enough, he had me and Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they're very tough on yourself. That's not fair. Well, look, you have a new series of books now, yes. uh, Warp. So tell us about the latest book, because it's obviously age, uh, aimed at a different generation. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Warp stands for Witness Anonymous Relocation Program. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's an FBI series where the, the federal government have discovered how to open the Einstein Rosen Bridge, which is a wormhole to the rest of us. Okay. And they're hiding federal witnesses uh, in Victorian London where they can't be found mm -hmm. um, by the mob. And that gets that means I can send all these people back to Victorian London. Or in the case of this new book, uh, back to 17th century England to the witch trials and mm -hmm. explore all these fantastic uh, places uh, in history. And it's a comedy. It doesn't sound like a comedy, witch trials in the 17th century, yeah. but, it, but it's actually quite funny. So I really, I really enjoyed it. And I love research now, which I never loved when mm -hmm. I was in school. I love going on the internet and finding out all about uh, different periods in history. So I'm slowly coming around to my dad's way of thinking yes. that, his, that history is important. Well, parents are right most of the time, anyway. They are, aren't they? I'm finding that out. Yeah. But anything to do with time travel will, yeah. will, will get interest. But, but these yeah. books, like Lucy said, are aimed at a, a, kind of a slightly older teen audience. I think so, yeah. yeah. They're, they're a bit more adult in that they're for about 12 to 14s, so whereas Artemis could be read by an eight year old. Mm. I wouldn't really recommend these, they're quite scary. Um, I've tried to be scary. It's not easy to scare kids. I mean, I used to test it on my own kids. I would read a horrific passage and he'd just, <laughs> he'd just laugh. At you know, you know, really, really, Father, I got to primary school. Yeah, yeah. That's nothing to me. You know, I'm, doing, I'm making a communion next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit more than that if you want yeah, to scare me. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so. but listen. Somebody's got to take up the movie option on these books because I go and see these movies. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're a you're a Doctor Who fan, are you? Well, I'm, I've got a house full of Doctor Who fans. Yeah. And especially with two younger sons. Yeah. Which is well, crazy. well, they sh they should like it. I, I have become a Doctor Who fan recently. Uh, we never got it when I was kids because it was on the the English channels. Right. Uh, we had the black and white Irish channel of which yes. there was one, yeah. Yeah. and it was mostly about cows and God. They were here. Yeah. <laughs> they were here. Say. Yeah. And um, for and Sunday special, it was like, <laughs> Sunday special was cows in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so we missed Doctor Who. We used to look in through the window of our neighbours. But mm. I've come around to it recently, and it's really fantastic. Yeah, well, they're, they're big budget episodes these yeah. days. Yeah, I know, people are obsessed. The previous days. Lots more to ask you about. Okay. And thank you, because Owen has kindly given us five copies of his new book, The Forever Man, uh, which is his third book in this Warp series. So to win a copy, just head to our Facebook page for more details and like our page, plus share and comment on the post. Now, some comments are already in for you, Owen. Uh, Siobhan from Dublin wants to know, what book are you most proud of completing? Good question. Uh... I'm very proud of the Hitchhiker's Guide book I did because that was a real challenge and it, 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 cut, it, uh, it was stacked against me really and the internet went nuts beforehand and there was, I remember I almost didn't write that because I, I was getting so much negative feedback and then one day I'm on my computer on Facebook and this banner came up, sign the petition to stop Owen called for writing the Hitchhiker's Guide sequel. <laughs> so I immediately joined that society. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I started by defending myself, saying, you know, I, he's not a bad guy, he's pretty good, I, his style is Did nice. Did you disclose and, your identity? Oh, no, I no. but they sounded really whiny to me. I thought, no, yeah. go the other way. So yeah. I said, he's, he's horrible, he buys his jeans in the kids' section and pennies. And, I, <laughs> you know, and that was really liberating, and I realised, you know what, this doesn't mean a thing. No. It doesn't mean a thing. And then I just went down and, and wrote the book. Good. Well, thank God you did. Now, everybody, thank you so much for your comments. Do keep them coming in for a guest for Owen and for Lucinda. They're staying with us till the bitter end. If you have any questions for them, here's how to get in touch. You can text the word 7 followed by your message to 53131. Pop us an email, 7 o'clock show at tv3.ie. Or find 7 o'clock show on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. All right, in the kitchen tonight is the one and only chef, Derry Clark. Derry, how are you, sir? Good to clap again, sir. Okay. Great. <laughs> Did you not get the rider list? <laughs> he has to be applauded every time we mention his Sorry, name. Sorry. <laughs> By the end of the show, we have to be genuflected. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry Lucy, that's my ally there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we are bros. Okay. You are that's bros. Of course we are. You are bros. All right. Uh, sir, um, what are they cooking? Remind us again. Spicy spare ribs. Slowly, slowly cooked. All right. Okay. What ingredients do we need, bar the obvious? Don't say ribs. <laughs> <laughs> what, what else? Spices. Right. Um, cider or apple juice, mm -hmm. um, orange juice, okay. and some honey, brown sugar, <coughs> tomato paste, mustard. Okay, uh, and any questions in? There is a question in uh, from uh, Lisa from Mayo. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's top tips for a trainee chef and how to improve their skills and to get faster in the kitchen? 
to improve your skills, really, it takes time, you know. Mm. Um, people kind of uh, want to go faster in a kitchen. It's like everything else in life. You're going training on a bike or whatever. You want to be yes. fast. But it takes time, you know. Yes. Do each thing slowly, get it right, and then move on. For, you know, and then speed will come okay. the more you do it. Okay? Exactly. Thank, Thank you, you Jerry. Right. Now, time now for a very quick break. When we come back, and Lucinda will be putting on the chef assistant hats to assist Derry in the kitchen. Don't look so scared. And our Rose of Events, Kira King, will be joining us later on. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back to the 7 o'clock show, everybody. We're live and about to start cooking. Well, when I say we, basically Derry is. Our guest tonight are author Owen Copper and politician Lucinda Creighton. And doing the honours of the kitchen tonight is super chef Mr. Derry Clark. Yay. Again, that's good. <laughs> I'm getting applause but every you know time. I miss you because we don't see you anymore. Now I've been transferred. Fridays. I'm on the sorry, I'm on the uh, prime time now, Friday. Sorry. Oh, oh. oh. That was it. Ooh. hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. So right, look, we're ribs. going to do beautiful spare ribs and bean summer, which is actually coming on now, isn't it? I mean, it is starting yes. to come in, uh, which is great. Um, this can be done in the barbecue or in the oven. I'm doing this in the oven. I'll come to that in a minute. So I'm going to do a kind of a green cabbage coleslaw yes. with it. Or I'll just do the old-fashioned mayonnaise, mm. beef, <coughs> vinegar and onion base. So, Owen, I'm going to ask you to do a very fine um, shred for me. Owen very very makes his own coleslaw. I do, yeah, only. That do. should be enough. I just ring the coleslaw shop. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be enough. Okay, so... So before I get to the ribs, I'm going to do the... Um, just ring it. Ring it, that's what I do anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do the... Uh, marinated thing. Kind of... No, well, I have to, no, the marinade's here. We'll come to that in a second. I'm going to do the uh, sauce. Okay. I'll cook it in. Um, so some cider, or if you want no alcohol, apple juice is great. Okay. Yeah. Everyone's going quiet. They're all thinking of that cold bulmers. They're all thinking of my fingers ending up on this jumping yeah, board. I can't take my eyes off. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are, are you it's the I am. I'm <laughs> That's fine. We can uh, Owen. We have time. Some um, orange juice. This is a great marinade for anything actually for chicken. Yeah. This chicken's really good. Some brown sugar. Now, yeah, people say how much, as you can see there, that was 50 grams exactly. Oh, dairy. All right. So just wing it. Mustard. That's yeah, Dijon mustard. Our English is okay. Yeah. Uh, some tomato paste. Where do we get the spice from? Some honey. I come to spice now. You're very impatient. Um, really. Do you know why? Don't call me This any. is one of my favorite dishes ever. I'm starving. Yeah. Mm. I, better get, I better get her right, so yeah. this in there. Yeah. yeah. So in she goes, everything there. Now, one thing I actually haven't got the recipe, I just noticed, but the impairings I love, that's why I'm putting it in. But you know, you can put uh, lemon juice instead of um, oranges, limes are good, vinegar is fine. What I'm doing is here, I want to get all the flavours mixed into it, and I want to uh, reduce it a little bit, because I don't want it too thin. So I have the, uh, the bay leaf, rosemary and thyme. Great combinations for a marinade. Yeah. Okay. This is how to keep an Irishman quiet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Even vegetables to cut. Do you cook at home or is Jackie a bit of a genius? Jackie is the genius in our house. But our son Finn, this is his favourite dish, so. Really? I should be paying attention. Well, yes. Spare ribs are, are they? Spare ribs, oh yeah. Okay, there are the ribs. As you can see, they really are delicious. Nice and meaty, okay. Bacon ribs, pork ribs, should I say. You can't get bacon ribs as well. Little bone there. The bone is important because the bone gives the flavour, and okay. you don't want it falling off. You know, you're falling off the bone. Spice mix. Now I have a spice. I have on the recipe spice mix. So it's your own spice mix. This one's my own. I have smoked paprika, uh, cayenne pepper, cumin, coriander, sugar, brown sugar, salt, pepper. Nice. I know it's very nice and some thyme. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, but you know, in the supermarkets now, you can go in and get a spice mix. You can get loads, like Moroccan spice mixes, oh, yeah. uh, Asian spice mixes, um, Indian. They're all perfect. I always think a rub is great. Um, I always think that. Yeah, do a rub first. <laughs> <laughs> With <the> rub. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Oh, and pizza. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to be on the ball for you today. I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. I love the exhaust pick, by the way, you know, <laughs> in the car, yeah? So both sides. Both sides. And a uh, great thing to do is leave this for a few hours in the fridge, cover it, or overnight's fine, okay? Okay. And, uh, Surely it's not. We're very hungry. Very it's very loud. It's very loud. They're doing great. As fine as they can. As the finer, the better for that shop. Yeah. It's it's fine. Fine. Yeah. 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 Okay. This is really simple. So you have a roasted dish. Now, what you could do is, if you want to do a barbecue, come to that stage. 
and uh, have your barbecue and seal them on the barbecue as is. Yes. As is. And put them somewhere cool in the barbecue, on the side of the barbecue or on the top rack. And make this a bit thicker. Reduce it for about five minutes and get a, a pastry brush or a paintbrush and keep brushing it on. Now, okay? when you say make it a bit thicker, that's turn the heat down and leave it on the hob for longer. Yes, that's very thin now. See that? Five minutes. Let it okay. Thicken. Okay. Nice. I don't believe you have this kind of look. So I don't believe you. I do believe you. I'm, I'm going to try and do this on Saturday night, so I'm seriously concentrating. Cheaper, see better. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, uh, say, yeah. I would leave this another couple of minutes if we haven't had time, but I haven't got time. You know, I will, it will come down, it will reduce, okay? okay. Another great actually in here is ketchup is a great thing. Yes. Rather ketchup, or yeah. brown sauce is really good. It smells delicious. Doesn't it? Yeah. And, uh, so nice. you yeah. know, less sugar you put in, if you want a more bitter, obviously less sugar or honey, you know. Mm. That's up to your own flavours and tastes, okay? Now, Jerry, so, we only learned this, well, we only learned this during the last ad break, but it turns out that the sin is a little bit of a deal yet. Yeah, she so made some pulled pork. What you make last again for your dinner party? Uh, pulled pork, um, Asian seafood chowder, um, for starter. I made a, believe it or not, an avocado chocolate pie for dessert. What? Wow. Yeah, it's, um, Why am I doing this? It's a pity. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and they don't say too much because it'll have you on here next week. <laughs> 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 they pay you what they pay you, Derry. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Derry pays us. But like, this way, this, the reason I do this in the oven, because even having a barbecue, having this ready when your guests come, yes. is something to yeah. eat while you're waiting for I the know, sausages, so burgers, and steaks. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and I used to do this on Sunday morning. That's how I got this dish. Sunday morning, I would do this dish and uh, stick it in a very low oven, 140, really slow oven, okay? And after about three hours, four hours later, oh. you take it out and you have a beautiful, beautiful, wow. Oh, uh, Marry me. <laughs> You've already spoken for... <laughs> four hours later, I'm still chopping some green. <laughs> yeah, some green thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, too late. Too Actually, late, next book, you can do a cookbook next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's very few of those out there at the moment. Let me <laughs> Menus for leprechauns. Mm. There's so, so many, so many cookbooks, isn't there? Really? What's that? Health, healthier than the old mayo job. Yeah, the mayo job is... Uh, well, they put mayonnaise in this, but I think green cabbage is a nice exchange from the white cabbage. You know? So a little bit of vinegar, uh, chardonnay, some olive oil. Salt and pepper is very important. They want to try and cook it a bit. The vinegar and oil does that. Ah, cooks it. There we go. And just toss it, okay? It's like a place for ribs. They toss that. That's it, right? Yeah. yeah. Obviously, I'd leave the cabbage for about 20 minutes just to soak in the, the juices, okay? Yeah. It looks amazing. Yeah. Sherry, that that sure, that's mad, so it cooks okay. in salt. No, in vinegar. Vinegar oh, cooks vinegar. things, yeah. And salt does too. Wow. Now, take one of these out. Okay. As All the crew behind here are kind of going, ooh, I yes, know, we're I've going for this. I've never seen so many people go as quiet. Back off. During the ad break. Oh, <laughs> one, one small tip. If the juice like this is a bit thin, strain it off into a pot and reduce it a bit more, okay? And just coat them over like that. And there you go. Spicy Delicious. spare ribs with a green it's cabbage. It's going to be like the Hunger Games during Cold the ad break. Amazing. <laughs> wow. It's like, well, I might whoa. share some with Martin because I'm so nice. But if you'd like to copy what Derry just cooked uh, tonight, please head to tv 3e forward slash 78 for Derry's recipe. And he's not getting away that easily, though. He will be answering some more of your questions later on. So to send in your questions, here's what you do. You can text the word 7 followed by your message to 53131. Pop us an email, 7 o'clock show at tv3.ie. Or find 7 o'clock show on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Now, don't forget that Derry is sticking around. He'll be answering those questions later, as Lucy just said. Plus, tomorrow on the show, Anton's got Louise Duffy as his co-host. Oh. Yes, because Mairead Farrell has finally gone on our honeymoon. Oh. Well, we had a bit of a whip round, and eventually we got her out. Know. They love Ballymount. Yeah. So we said hey. just it's, don't move too far. They'll have a great time. Uh, they'll be joined by uh, footballer Stephen Hunt and TV presenter Stephen Byrne. Uh, plus, we'll have Monday in our seventh session. Bit of music. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're heading into July. They get July. the really good gig. They get music as well on Fridays. Well, you know, we'll talk about it. And then Monday might sing July. Yeah. Because July like is that. next Wednesday. Yes, so it makes you know. sense. Richie Wilson will be in the kitchen making posh steak and chips for your Friday night cook. And the ingredients are on facebook.com forward slash 7 o'clock show if you want to join in. I might try and join in. Sounds like a good gig. Now, time Don't for one. Don't Derry's ribs. Oh, listen, I'm all over that. Don't you worry, mate. No. Time now for one very last quick break. When we come back, we'll be bringing you the best of events happening around the country this weekend. So you can get out and enjoy that amazing weather. And we'll also be chatting some more to Miss Sinton Owen once they've eaten. But first, here's a chance to win a trip away on us.
Yes, welcome back to the 7 o'clock show. If you have just joined us, our guests tonight are author, on call for a politician, Lucinda Creighton. And now, to gear us up for the weekend with her list of events from around the country, is our events queen, two events, Kira King. Woo! So you've been a queen and a king in one sentence. I know, I know. It's, it's confusing. I am a lot of royalty, in fairness. You are. You know, you I are. am. I've got four completely different festivals for you this weekend as okay, well, actually. Right. Um, we're going to go to Clare, I think, kind of first, to okay. uh, the, the Burn. Yeah, so this might interest you as a writer. Okay. Um, they have a festival down there called the Burn Tolkien um, Festival. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is it's a celebration of J.R.R. Tolkien, who obviously wrote the trilogy, The Lord of the Rings. Mm. So this has a massive fan base. So everyone, I think, will be heading down to Clare this weekend. There's so many different things on. So as you can imagine, there's going to be uh, film screenings. There's going to be workshops on writing. Cool. Um, there's a really cool workshop, actually. It's a graphic novel workshop, and it's on at 3 o'clock on Simon, in an Simon Library on Friday mm -hmm. at 3 p.m. And there's an illustrator there, and you'll be able to uh, draw orcs and elves and all the different fantastical characters from the wow. Lord of the Rings trilogy, wow. which is really cool. It's really different. Cool. And then on the Saturday, uh, you can celebrate all sorts of different culinary delights, again influenced by J.R.R. Tolkien, um, in the Burn Food Emporium. And there'll be music there as well, so that's about 35 euro per person. And then on Sunday, there's a really great family day out in the woodland area of Alloway, where you can go into the woods and you can learn... Um, skills that the elves uh, would know like wood carving and okay. uh, bow making and there's also an archery demonstration as well because mm. you know the elves in the lord of the rings trilogy obviously you know legolas do you remember legolas with the long blonde hair yeah. orlando bloom played them yeah. they were great at they're pretty good oh. archers they're pretty yeah. good archers in yes. fairness yes. so um it's kind of a really different thing for a family to do together as well you know and also for for those for lovers of, of the books lord of the rings it's something interesting to do well, of course you're going to say for lovers aren't yeah. you? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, for lovers yeah, as well that's the kind of weekend what you're is, into yeah no what it's based on is there's a place in the Lord of the Rings called Mordor, which seemingly looks like um, the oh. landscape of the Burn. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So there you uh, go. But if you go to watch the movies, that will be your weekend, because they yeah. are long movies. Oh, yeah. and, they're, yeah. and they're very long books as well. Yeah. Very, very oh, long books as well. Okay, from Claire to Cork. Yes, I actually watched Eat, Pray, Love during the week, speaking of movies. You know, the one with Julia Roberts where she goes mm. off to, to Bali and she meditates. And she Any good? Is, I loved it. So oh, after really? I watched the movie, I was like... Bali Fermat? Ba no. Well, no. <laughs> no <way>. Bali <laughs> Mount. No, <sorry>. Bali <laughs> Mount. <laughs> but after, I was like, God, maybe I'll hop on a plane and go to India and, you know, oh. go and meditate to find myself. It's always great to find oneself. Yes. But actually, you can go down to Cork this weekend and find yourself. There's a festival okay. called... Uh, it's called the Infinite... Yeah, the Infinite Festival, Arts Festival, and it's on in this art and manner, which is absolutely gorgeous it's really beautiful and it's all about promoting peace and world peace and peace within and they they do lots of workshops on tai chi or chai yoga or you know all that sort of um, mindfulness and mindfulness and yeah. meditation and there's great classes for kids as well they're called yogi classes and it's done through dance and just based on happiness oh, they, there's really embarrassing classes though where people have to like laugh like <laughs> no no <laughs> but like, for the kids it really doesn't matter like the, you know it's kind of based on it being joyful and blissful which is probably good for the parents as well because they get to get away from their kids for yes which makes it all the more exactly by, by the way that's just as good for the kids <laughs> yeah. 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 Their parents for a yeah. yeah and on the saturday it covers the art of radiant living so that's all about boosting your energy levels and then on sunday the art of peaceful living so i think you can do a class where you can do tai chi out on the lawn so it's all about healthy, uh, healthy mind, but also healthy, healthy body. body. There's gorgeous food down there available as well. So it's 12 euro for a buffet <coughs> in the side of matter, which is stunning. Nice. Yeah. Okay, down to cut it. Down to cut it. This is Munster is the place to be this it weekend. Is. Yeah. I love this. This is a potato festival. It's a fela on potato. Potato. Um, I don't know if you heard, but you know it's pretty big in Ireland. Potatoes. And yes, we know potatoes. Thank you, Kira. We have had them. What, what, are, what are they called again? Yeah, potatoes. Potatoes. Yeah, potatoes. Yeah, potato. <laughs> you should try them. They're really good. <laughs> but um, yeah, down in on the Dingle Peninsula, this is something really cool and really, really different. They have this kind of mini festival celebrating potatoes and kind of the importance of it in the diet of rural communities, you know, across yeah. Ireland. And what they do is they have this competition where 10 different potato growers from across the Dingle Peninsula will kind of fight it out uh, to Ooh, be like crowned. A potato off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Basically, a potato <laughs> off to be crowned the uh, uh, champion grower. Of potatoes, so there's blind tasting of potatoes. Whoa, that's a yeah. pretty decent trophy. Yeah. Kind of cool, isn't I expected it? it to be in the shape yeah. of a potato, yeah. so yeah. I'm a bit disappointed. I am like down there, <laughs> <at> the <laughs> Mr. It's, Chancellor. It's a great way for visitors as well to go to Dingle and kind of, you know, suss out. Ireland and our, our love, well, our love affair with potatoes, eat some, sure. eat yeah. some potatoes, exactly, you know, <laughs> and uh, listen to local music and kind of just take in the gorgeousness that is Dingle, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wow. it is a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we found a place outside of Munster as well. That we we did, to. yeah, we're going to go to County Leash and this is for the Fishertown Trad Fest and this is a great, again, another great family festival. 
Um, under 12s go free. Um, the That's tickets good. are really reasonable. 10 euro for the Friday and 15 euro for the whole weekend. There's so many different things on. Um, there's going to be two stages. Uh, again, all about trad music and you know trad fest and celebrating that sort of you know side of life. Uh, one will be for professional musicians, and the other stage will be for uh, local musicians. So there's going to be trad sessions on nonstop. Okay. There's a little family area. There's also workshops you can do in everything from set dancing to fiddle to accordion. Uh, you name it. So it's on at least this weekend. It, it's not to be missed, especially for. You know, if you're looking for something different to do with your family. Okay, where are you going, Crazy Cash, and who are you bringing? Where am I going? I'm going home to see my parents because I've been partying for about a yeah. year now and I haven't seen them. Wow. Yeah, so I'm going home to Connemara, so it's not bad. Yeah. Almost okay. partying for four weeks means she's not allowed in anywhere. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she has to she's go home to her parents because she's not allowed in yeah. any, any place. <laughs> I mean, Kira, you're on the radio tonight as well. I am indeed from Thank Thank Work, so work, work. I know you. Know. Work course. Now, uh, more, K Kira's with us again next week, of course. Now, earlier on, he cooked us a delicious spiced ribs. A few of them. Still in my teeth. Delicious. Didn't get anywhere near mine. <laughs> you don't need any. All right, Derry Clark is now answering questions. What have you got for us, Derry? Um, nice question, actually, from um, James from Galway. Uh, any other ideas for quick and easy marinades during the summer season? There is a thing about marinades. Um, some people overuse them. Mm-hmm. And I often go to barbecues where you taste a dish, like chicken especially. People uh, have it marinating for overnight. And all the taste is the marinade. You don't taste the chicken. Mm -hmm. So that's one tip. I wouldn't, you know, half an hour, an hour before the marinade, put it on. Um, marinades normally, I think, great combinations are, you know, ginger, garlic, chilies, mm -hmm. oils, lime. rapeseed oil, lime, lemon, no, any citrus, oranges, hard herbs, you know, rosemary, thyme, bay leaves, um, salt, pepper are very good. You know, and mix and blitz it up together, mm -hmm. you know, in a liquidizer. Okay. Or yeah. just phone Derry, we'll give you his number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really likes those calls about three in the morning. I'm doing a barbecue tomorrow. Derry, yeah. thanks very much. Thank great. You, great. Well, it's good to see you again. Mm. Really is. Now, back to you two. Uh, Owen, yes. uh, but watch out, he's kind of stepping kind of into the political. Oh, oh yes. Because yes. you're getting involved in something big in Wexford. Yes, yeah. I'm uh, a bid ambassador. For the three sisters bid for the European Seat of Culture in 2020. Okay. So I'm going around saying how great Wexford is and uh, trying to persuade people to give us that title in 2020. Okay, because it, it is a big deal. Mm. Well, it's, it's, it's several other places around Ireland have had. I know, it's a big deal for us, but we finally, usually we, we don't say anything about Wexford because we want to keep it quiet. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> but finally we've decided to open it up and share it with the rest share of you good rest. people and yeah. the rest of Europe. Because we have an embarrassment. Of culture down there, it's, oh. just, it's just overflowing now out oh. into the surrounding areas. And they've also got a big selling author. Yeah, it's kind of go. kind of a big deal around here. Bid, so yeah, you know, I reckon they, they should be able to land it. Yes, I'm going to do a video. I'm going to sing a song, you know, and bring them some strawberries. We are well, not necessarily <laughs> win you anything. No, no, I'm not sure. Not, no. And I said you're involved with Jack and Jill Foundation. Of course, well, I'm not. I'm, I'm not really involved, but I'm a supporter. Yes. And, um, the bull tomorrow night. The Derby bull is on tomorrow night. Um, the Dubai Duty Free Derby is on mm -hmm. on Saturday. As you probably know, in the Curra and yes. um, the annual Jack and Jill ball is on um, in the K Club tomorrow night. And I think there are still a few tickets left. So, if anybody is interested in getting glammed up and going down and having a really good night and doing it all for a really good cause. Such a good cause. It's a brilliant, oh, it's a brilliant, brilliant yeah. foundation, yeah. And uh, they also have the horse show ball coming up um, the week of the Dublin horse show in um, in Dublin uh, yeah. on a Friday night, the 7th of August. So that's another opportunity to support them. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, Sharon from Dublin has been in touch. We've had plenty of comments in. And uh, Sharon wants to know, uh, Lucinda, now we know that you're going to the ball tomorrow night, but that isn't normally how you would spend your downtime. No, I'm actually not going tomorrow night because there's a big show jumping um, oh, uh, in the city it's thing in Shelburne Park tomorrow night that I'm going oh, to. Sure. But I would normally be going to, to the Jack and Jill Bowl. Um, what do I do in my downtime? Just the normal stuff, I guess. Well, um, whip up an amazing dinner. <laughs> and <give you> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I do love, I love cooking and I love entertaining, but I don't because I, I get very... I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so like I spend the whole day cooking, so it's not very, it's not a very efficient use of time. So yes. I don't do it every weekend. I do it every so often. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, the the normal, like I like to read and I like to to do do different sports and okay. ride horses and things like that. So mm. yeah. Uh, have we heard rumours that you're writing a romantic no. novel? 
Uh, it's kind of, yes. Yes, you may have heard that rumors because I Is that rumor true? Ah, you. <laughs> oh, you told us. That's how we knew. Uh, no, I, I'm trying to get a publisher in it. I am. I'm trying to dip a toe into the romantic genre. So it's a, it's a love story about between two 85-year-olds living oh, in their wow. retirement home in Battersea in London. So oh, that's it's, nice. It's, it's quite interesting. It has its problems. Right. But uh, I think they're going to they're gonna get around those and there may oh, be a happy ending. That's <laughs> nice. Thanks, guys. Okay. 85. Uh, Unfortunately, for well, hope for us all. Yeah. We wait for Alan's book. We <laughs> will. <laughs> it's hope for everyone, yes. And uh, that's all we've got time for tonight. Uh, our thanks to Owen Colford, to Lucinda Clayton, Kira <laughs> King, and of course to Chef Derry Clark. Of course, to you guys at home for watching. Thank you so much. And Anton Louise are back with you tomorrow, and they'll be joined by Irish footballer Stephen Hunt plus TV presenter um, Stephen Byrne. Also, Chef Richie Wilson will be cooking some tasty steak and chips. Plus, singer Mundy will be gearing us up for the weekend of the seven sessions. If you have any questions for tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's show, email us at 7 o'clock show at tv3.ie or you'll get us on Facebook or Twitter. Yes, we'll be in bed though. We won't be here. Stay tuned for news at 8 p.m., followed by adoption stories at 8.30. Martin and I will see you back on Monday. Have a lovely weekend. Bye -bye.